We've talked about biological filtration and mechanical filtration. And the last major form of filtration is chemical filtration. Often for most of us, especially those of us who have planet tanks, we almost never use chemical filtration. But there are several situations where chemical filtration is an absolute all-star. So let's make sure we cover those in Filtration 101. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. Welcome back to Filtration 101. For our third episode, we're going to cover chemical filtration. Now the common ways that we filter most of our tanks are typically a combination of mechanical filtration and biological filtration. Very rarely are we using chemical filtration. What is chemical filtration? Very simple. It is typically using some kind of activated product. This is usually something like activated carbon or a resin to pull all of those harmful and potentially dangerous chemicals out of our water and hold on to it. Simple, right? It kind of sounds like mechanical filtration, but it's basically holding and storing stuff permanently as opposed to holding on to particulates and letting some of the chemicals in the water get through. Now, the reason why we typically don't use chemical filtration is very often in the case of like planet tanks, this will mean that we're going to lose some of our fertilizers and those things that are beneficial to the overall ecosphere that we're creating. However, there are several cases where chemical filtration is actually the best filtration. So let's talk about some of the uses of chemical filtration and maybe some of the things that we don't think of as chemical filtration right away that actually can be very useful in special cases. So activated carbon is the most common thing that we think about, right? Uh, if you, you get like any given filter these days that has a cartridge system, there's always a packet of carbon or a cartridge or something in there that has carbon. Carbon can do extremely, extremely fine water polishing and get all sorts of harmful stuff like heavy metals and things out of our water. The problem is once it's done, it's done. And it typically only lasts a short period of time a couple weeks, a month, it really depends on the tank. But there's some great uses for carbon, even in something like a planet tank like this one behind me. So let's talk about those, right? The first major use is if we do have some kind of issue with our fish to where we need to medicate. One of the easiest ways to get the medicine out of the water, chemical filtration, right? We can add some activated carbon or there's uh, there's other options too. We'll talk about those in a sec, but mostly activated carbon is what we typically use. It's the easiest. We'll put that on our filter. We'll run it for a couple of days, pull all of the excess medicine out of the water now that we're done dosing it, or if we're going to prep for a completely different medicine that we want to dose, rather than have little bits of it laying around in a water change, we'll use something like an activated carbon filter, pull all of that out, make sure that the filtration takes care of it, get it out of there. We'll dispose of that carbon and we're good to go. Now, I, I mentioned earlier that we can also use carbon for water polishing because of the way that carbon works, where it's attracting ions, right? This is the science part of it. It's attracting the, the harmful chemicals by similar to uh, something like anoxic filtration, where it's using a negative charge or ion in order to pull those chemicals toward it and store it permanently we can also use this to get really, really fine filtration underwater. So we're looking for that absolute perfect crystal clear water right before, say, photography if you're a big aquascaper. Having carbon in your water system for a short period of time can be really, really beneficial to getting that ultra clear, like, see-through crystal water, right? That, that dream clear water. Products that are very common for something like this, other than your standard activated carbon, is going to be something like Purigen. Now, Purigen is a specialized carbon. Um, I won't go into the, the full details of the product. That's not what matters here. Just that we can use something like activated carbons, Purigen, which is a special carbon, and very similar compounds. There's also some resins out there that can be used that can help super polish our water, make it immaculately clear and beautiful. So that if we wanted to take some really nice photography or maybe like we're, we're doing some kind of a filming project or we're gonna a presentation or maybe you just got a guest coming over and they always complain about how the fish tank never looks good and you want to show them up and make that thing look amazing a little bit of carbon goes a long way you run that stuff for like a week makes the water look real nice now i mentioned resins the most common use of resin 
Uh, and there's lots of different compounds. Let's be clear, but typically there are various resins. For chemical filtration is going to be found in a reverse osmosis system. So for reverse osmosis, the way that that works is we're forcing water through a semi-permeable membrane. This is the science part. But that is typically made of some kind of resin. There's a resin that you can refill in a reverse osmosis system. And it does that ionic change, right? It's doing that ionic capacity thing to adhere a lot of the molecules and stuff and give extremely, extremely well filtered, basically pure H2O, pure water out. They, you know, when we get a reverse osmosis system, we can go from very hard water to something that's like 8 TDS. There's almost nothing left. It's practically fully distilled water. That is doing a specialized version of chemical filtration using a special resin in a semi-permeable membrane to attract all those things and trap them. So one of the things that we may not know is that we're actually using chemical filtration more often. If you use an RODI system, you're doing chemical filtration all the time. But there's some downsides, right, to chemical filtration in general. The, the biggest negative, as I kind of mentioned before, with activated carbon is like if you're in a planet tank, it kind of absorbs everything. So you can't always, and there's some products that advertise differently, I, I understand that, but w go real broad in general here, right? It's going to absorb things like the phosphorus, the, <laughs> the nitrogen, your nitrate, the, the, a lot of the small micro trace chemicals, your borons, your magnesiums, your molybdenums, all these things that are necessary for plant health if you use chemical filtration for long periods of time without a very specialized product and typically some adjustment to your dosing regime, you'll starve your plants out and you start running into plant health issues. Now, most of us in a planet tank, we're not going to use chemical filtration. We use it in very small cases. Like I mentioned before, getting rid of medicines or making RODI water. There's also a couple other versions of chemical filtration that we might not immediately think of as that's chemical filtration, but... You've got wonderful products like the phosphate absorbing pads or the ammonia absorbing pads. These are physical media, so our mechanical filtration, that are impregnated or permeated with lots and lots of chemical filtration compounds, typically some kind of resin or activated product, that is going to help target and remove very specific chemicals out of the water. So if we have like big phosphate issues, uh, you can buy the phosphate removing pads. Uh, we got, we'll put some on the screen here or there's ammonia removing pads, stuff like that. There's lots of options for these kind of pads that are designed to do certain things. And you can even get ones that are just a carbon infused pad to give you a little bit of carbon filtration for that super, super fine filtration mixed in with a piece of mechanical filtration to help catch larger particulates. And then as the smaller stuff gets in and moves through the actual pad itself, that's where the carbon takes over or the phosphates or the ammonia, whichever removing pad it is. And you typically get these in big blocks. You can cut them into small chunks to put them in your filter for a short period of time, then change them out if you need to keep using them or stop using them until you get to a point of where it becomes necessary again. This is all forms of chemical filtration. It allows us in many cases to do very specialized tasks. That's the beauty of chemical filtration. Unlike mechanical and biological, which is there to be always active, always kind of constantly doing its job, chemical filtration is something that we want to use usually in small doses. Now, yes, there is a case for using chemical filtration all the time, right? There are some small cases for this. Uh, guys that will use, say, like, carbon in um, specific filters that really recommend like the the uh, ADA Superjet that super nice like all big metal stainless steel canister filter comes with a massive bag of carbon and that's designed to be the filtration the whole time is this massive filter bag full of carbon uh, you can see this also in salt water where some of your chemical filtration is used quite a lot more than is mechanical or some of the biological processes However, for most of us, if we're talking planet tanks or freshwater tanks, we typically only are going to use chemical filtration in very specific tasks. Those phosphate pads, ammonia removing pads, we need to really clear up the water. We need to absorb some leftover medicine from treating a sick fish. Whatever those special tasks may be, we're temporarily using chemical filtration to accomplish something very specific and then removing it. Now, 
very commonly in the hobby, uh, we don't know this until we start like getting education from a YouTuber like this chuckle head right here, right? But you know, we will buy like those cartridges until we were like, yeah, you really only need some sponge and some ceramics. You don't need those replacing those things every month or whatever. So some of us will use that chemical filtration a lot longer. Or if you have a, a beer bottom tank and you just have like that that broken pirate ship, right? My favorite ornament ever <laughs> to use in an aquarium. Uh, maybe you're using chemical filtration to help handle all the excess chemicals that are being produced because you don't have something like plants to help handle those things. And they're not naturally eaten by the bacteria cultures that are going to be in your tank or handled by the mechanical filtration. You'll use something like carbon to absorb excess nitrates and phosphates and all that kind of stuff so that your tank doesn't get crazy amounts of algae. This is another great use for those who don't typically do a planted tank or some other way to handle this. This is where chemical filtration plays its role and can be very important in our aquariums. That's it. That's filtration 101 for chemical filtration. I know this is a little simpler, but that's kind of the point. Chemical filtration is not something that we typically, or at least a lot of us, do not typically use all the time. And very commonly, we just say, oh, just throw that out. You don't need it. Like, that's one of the most common things you'll hear from a lot of us uh, aquarium <laughs> YouTubers, right? It's like, ah, oh, you don't need that stuff. Just toss it out. Use the sponge and this. But there are some very small cases where that can be extremely useful. Now, me personally, I almost never use carbon. I think I've used carbon twice in the last, like, almost five years at this point. And uh, it was only after I had to do a, a very a specific series of medications that could not all be dosed at the same time. So I had to clear up from one medication, clear out that water really, really efficiently. A water change was not going to be safe enough, then dose another medication. It's almost never that we're going to run into this kind of scenario. However, if you do have that kind of scenario, you have the perfect answer. Just a little bit of carbon, some charcoal, if you will. So with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, give it a little thumbs up. You know, that always helps the, the magic YouTube algorithm do its thing. Uh, let me know down below, where do you tend to use chemical filtration? Do you use it at all? Have you never used chemical filtration? Do you always use chemical filtration? You know, I love hearing from you guys. I love kind of having that, that back and forth, understanding a lot about how you guys experience things or what you learned about chemical filtration. Maybe you didn't realize it, like reverse osmosis resin, chemical filtration, right? Who knows? Let me know in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. If you're new, you've never seen one of my videos before, first off, Go check out the first two chapters of Filtration 101. I'm going to cover back beneficial bacteria and mechanical filtration. It gives you a really great high-level overview of the entire filtration process without talking about specific filter types, right? Like a, a sponge or a hang-on back, although that's coming. But it gives you an idea of what's going on in your aquarium and why these things matter, what they do, where they help, etc. It's really, really great to give you a better understanding, kind of up your game on what filtration is doing for you in a science, slightly scientific level, but mostly just easy to digest. If you enjoy stuff like this, I do a live stream every Tuesday, videos every Saturday. Give us a little subscribe. Maybe just lightly tickle that little notification bell. That way you don't miss any of these videos, any of my live streams, stuff on the community tab. I always have polls, all that kind of stuff. Check it out, please. Also, Helps your fellow YouTuber. Just saying. Makes the, makes the algorithm monster happy. And that guy is insatiable. If you don't enjoy this stuff, you can hit that thumbs down twice. And I'll just keep making more. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.